the Lord God Almighty. Make his strength. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Israel. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness. My loving greetings to each and every one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is David Turner, and I want to welcome you to this week's program, The Gospel is the Power. Hallelujah. This week, God has placed upon my heart a message that I want to share with you entitled, The Virtue of God. Amen? The Virtue of God. The key verse is found in the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 19. It says, The virtue flowed from the robe of Jesus, and all the sick were healed. Amen? Hallelujah. But before we get into the heart of the message, I want to share with you, as I was praying and meditating this very morning, I felt that God was putting something upon my heart that was special for you that I should share before we begin the message. We find in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13 to 18, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, and he says, who do the people say I am? And the disciples responded, and they said, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Jesus answered them and said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up and he said, you are the Christ, meaning the anointed one, the son of the living God. And Jesus responded and said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this has not been revealed to you by man, but rather by my Father in heaven. And I say to you, you shall be called Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church. The name Peter means rock. But I want to share with you through this passage, the first key for each one of us is when Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? This is the key for my life, and this is the key for your life. Precious child of God, who do you say that Jesus is? Is Jesus the Son of God? Is he your Savior? Is he your healer? Is he your ever-present help in time of need? Or is he a good teacher, as many said in the Bible? Is he just a man, as others have said? Your answer to that question, just like Peter, is what will determine God's presence in your life. For you see, God will not invade your life. He is a gentleman. Jesus Christ said, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Even through my message today, through many messages you might have heard about Jesus, he is standing at the door and knocking. But at the end of the day, it's who do you say that Jesus is? You see, there were... Two thieves crucified on crosses right next to Jesus. Book of Luke chapter 23, verse 42 and 43. There was, were two thieves when Jesus was being crucified. One of them mocked Jesus and made fun of him. But the other one realized who Jesus was. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to this man, Surely you will be with me today in paradise. Precious child of God, to that man, Jesus was Savior. 
And because of that, he received salvation. To so many in the Bible and so many today, Jesus, the Bible says, Exodus 15, 26, that he is the Lord who healeth thee. So to many, he is the healer. But to those who don't believe he heals, they're not being healed. But when we truly believe that he is the healer, then just like the thief on the cross received the salvation, and every one of us by faith in Jesus can receive the salvation in the same way Jesus is the healer. The key in your life, it will change what you do at work. It will change how you think about your circumstances. It will change how you are generous with your time and your life and your finances with people. It will change whether or not you are walking in fear or faith. Everything in your life centers around one question, the question that Jesus asked the disciples, same question he's asking you today. Who do you say he is? Jesus, at the end of that passage, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Before that, he said, and you are Peter and upon this, I will build, upon this rock, I will build my church. Precious people of God, Peter was not a rock. In fact, we see before Jesus was crucified, he denied him many times. It was only after Jesus' death and resurrection, when Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, that he came with the boldness of the power of God because of the Holy Spirit in him. But before that, he folded. So why is it that Jesus said that he was a rock? When he, he wasn't referring to Peter, the rock was not Peter, the rock was the revelation that Jesus was the Christ. Precious people of God, your life will be built upon the rock when you get that revelation and when you say, who do you believe Jesus is, you're able to answer in the same way that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, and it's revealed by the Holy Spirit to you, not just by my words or someone else's words. When you know that you know that you know that that is true, your life is built upon the rock. And when your life is built on the rock of the revelation, the rock of Christ Jesus, what happens is the gates of hell will not pre prevail against the church. The church is not the four walls in the building. You are the church, the body of Christ. Hebrews 3, 6, when we house the Holy Spirit, we are the temple of God, the Bible tells us. So you are the church. So when Jesus is saying the gates, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail, what he is saying is that he will build your life and the gates of hell will not prevail. What are the gates of hell? It's not two swinging doors like we think of the gate. The gates of hell are the curses of poverty that are coming against you. The gates of hell are the demonic spirits of sicknesses. The gates of hell are the attacks of the enemy that are coming against your life. So Jesus says, I will build your life and the gates of hell, meaning every attack of the enemy will not prevail in your life. Amen? Precious people of God, I encourage you, I share so many times. You know, book of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 21 to 33. It's the account when Jesus comes on the water and the disciples are afraid. And Peter says, if that's you, Lord, tell me, call me to walk to you. And he says, come. And Peter steps out of the boat and he walks on the water. But then all of a sudden he looks at the storm, the wind and the waves, and he begins to sink because he's looking at that instead of looking at Jesus. And all of a sudden Jesus reaches down and pulls him out. Precious child of God, I tell people continuously, the wind represents our emotions, the waves represent our circumstances. When you are constantly looking to the wind and the waves, your emotions and your circumstances, you will always sink. But when you can boldly answer the question in the midst of the storms, in the midst of the circumstances, in the midst of the gates of hell of every form coming against you, and you can look unto the author and finisher of your faith, Hebrews 12, verse 2, Jesus Christ, then the gates of hell will not prevail against you simply, not because you're great, not because you're powerful and strong, because you have the answer to the question, who do you say I am? The answer is, he is the Christ. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus Christ is the manna from up above. He's the Lamb of God slain since the foundations of the world. He is your Redeemer. He is re your Restorer. He is your peace. The Bible says, Jeremiah 17, 14, unless Jesus saves, we are not saved. Unless he heals, we are not healed. So when he is all of those things to you, when he is Jehovah Nissi, your victory and your banner, it's not only who he says he is. 
Who he says he is, is the truth. He is the way, the life, and the truth, John 14, 6. But what you think of him will never change who he is. But what you think of him will change your life. He is the same irregardless of what your thoughts of him are. But the moment you come into alignment with the word of God and who Jesus says he is, then automatically your life will be transformed. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We're coming right back with more of the message. But first, I want to encourage you with these miracles and testimonies that we've received at recent meetings and crusades. Um, about six to eight months ago, me and my sister got in a car accident and I had uh, severe neck spasms and I got leg pain. And um, when I came here today, God completely healed it. It's all gone? It's all gone. Can you move all your neck and everything? Yeah. Move it for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, I've been uh, diagnosed with hepatitis C um, since 1984. Um, came today, all day today, is just constant headaches all the time, pain in my side, um, and tonight I have no headache, and my side is, is great. Uh, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. The, and the Holy Spirit just told me your hepatitis is gone, too. That's great. Amen. That's, a, Amen. that's an outward manifestation of what happened inside. I've been prayed before and um, haven't seen any healing. And uh, God is just was sharing with me tonight that he was also healing me from bitterness that was longer lasting than even 25 years. Amen. And, you know, I, I praise God for that being God more than anything else. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give glory to Jesus Christ. Cuando vine porque tenía un dolor muy fuerte aquí y me han dicho que me van a operar. She had a, she came, she had a very strong pain in her neck and they told her she needed surgery. Ajá. Y cuando estuve orando, me, me, cuando dijo que pusieran la mano, yo me puse la mano y sentí que algo se me estiró. When you said to put uh, your hand where it hurt, she felt like something stretched and she started moving her neck. Amen. And she can move it all over now, the place turn now. Turn it up and back. Muevalo bien de un lado al otro. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell us, buddy. I've been having headaches for about eight years, very painful. Wow. And now tonight it's all gone. It all gone? Your headache yeah. went away? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. No more in the name of Jesus. Uh, for many years, I had problems because I took some uh, pills for another condition that I had. And then I had ulcers for many years. Okay. So I was feeling sometimes good, sometimes bad, but I always felt like like um, like acid in my stomach, and now I don't feel it, and it's really nice. I I have a uh, diabetes, and as soon as I was praying, and I felt like something came out of my body. Amen. And I have sometimes I have uh, neck pain, and I feel comfortable right now. It's all gone. Yes. No pain. No. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I have a lower back pain for a quite long time, so tonight I pray that I feel the pain is reduced. As I'm going to continue to claim that He heals me. Amen. Where do you have it in your lower back? It's on the lower left side. Lower yeah. You can lay your hands there, gentlemen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak right now. Head to toe, power of God flow right now through her body. In the name of Jesus, I command the cervical cord to relax, tendons and ligaments to relax, vertebrae realign. Right now, in the name of Jesus, spinal cord, every pinched nerve be released, sciatic nerve be healed. Be free right now, pelvic bone and tailbone realign. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Start to bend right now, right now. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. Be free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What do you feel? Much better. Much better? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The virtue of God. Jesus, from his robe, the virtue would flow and heal the sick. Amen? I want to share with you this day from the book of Mark. Chapter 5, verse 25 to 35. 
It's the account of the woman who was healed out of the issue of blood. Now this woman, she had been bleeding for 12 years. 12 years she was sick and weak. What was the significance of this happening in her life? The Bible tells us in the book of Leviticus, chapter 15, verse 20 to 25, that for a woman who had the issue of blood who was bleeding, she would be considered unclean and sent outside of the camp. Precious people of God, have you ever felt like that in your life? That not only are you dealing with all the circumstances and all the issues around being sick, or having a problem in your life. But on top of that, that's not enough. You feel unclean. You feel like you've been ostracized and sent away by people and labeled because of the sickness you have. Whether it be whatever the response of the people to your sickness, that adds to your affliction and it adds to your sorrow instead of bringing you peace. Precious people of God, if you feel like that today, whatever your circumstance, I have the good news for you. Found in the Holy Bible, the book of Job, chapter 14, verse 4. The Bible says, who can make the unclean clean? And the answer to that is Jesus Christ. He can make the unclean clean. For the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 3 to 5, and the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 16, it says that Jesus Christ is holy, and he's the one who can make you holy. Amen. This is the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, our blood is very interesting. I never understood that I've been told our heart beats over 10,000 times, pumping the blood through our body. 10,000, not 10,000 times, but 10,000 liters of blood every day pumped through our heart. You know, that's amazing how our bodies work. You know, there's a tremendous significance to the blood. The blood, the Bible tells us in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, it says that there is life in the blood. Amen? So what is it that the blood of Jesus can do for you? The Bible tells us in the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, paraphrase, that the blood of Jesus Christ brings us salvation. Hallelujah. Because of Jesus' birth, Walking a sinless life, he's the lamb without spot, without blemish or wrinkle, for he was sinless. And he was sacrificed, he died on the cross, he was crucified and then buried. He resurrected from the dead, walked the earth for 40 days, and then ascended into heaven. When we have that understanding that we are saved, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, not because of our works or our goodness, but because of the grace of God. Because of the grace of God sending Jesus because he loved us so much. John chapter 3, verse 16, that he sent Jesus to die for us and be resurrected from the dead. And because of that, the blood of Jesus brings salvation unto our life, if we are willing to believe. Amen? Book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 14, it says that when we meditate, Upon the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus, it brings the pure consciousness in our life. So the pure consciousness comes not because of what we attain to and what we do and what we read and become. But our pure consciousness comes from meditating upon the cross of Jesus Christ. I tell people, even when you're crying out for healing in your life, stop thinking about the pain or the arm or the sickness and trying to you know, speak about that. Instead, spend your time being in the presence of God and meditating upon his sacrifice. Jesus, how you said, because of your stripes, the way you took the beating, the way you died for me, I am healed. As you meditate upon those things, you need not even ask. The presence of God will fill your life by the Holy Spirit and bring the healing unto you. The Bible says, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses, choose life. It sounds obvious to people, but for example, if a doctor, I just prayed for someone this morning, I went to their home, this man had cancer, and the doctors were telling him, just go home and die, you're going to die in a matter of weeks. He had fourth stage cancer. You know what? When a doctor says that, even if they mean well, he's basically speaking death. And when you meditate upon that thought over and over and over, you're welcoming and you're making a pact with that death. But Jesus says, choose life. 
The moment you spend your time, instead of thinking about what that doctor has said, and instead you're thinking about the resurrection power of Jesus, and how he was raised for the dead, and how in Mark 5, how Jairus' daughter he raised from the dead, and how he raised Lazarus from the dead in John chapter 11, in all those things, and he is the God of the resurrection. And as you spend your time thinking about the goodness of God, and the grace of God, and the power of God, all of a sudden, now you're thinking life. Now you're choosing life, and that life is entering your body. Even right now, there are people I know right now that walk, turned on this show or are hearing my words, feeling the discouragement, feeling the words of the world. But just by hearing the words, because I'm speaking the word of God, not my words of Jesus Christ, the faith is rising and the encouragement is coming unto your life right now. Precious people of God, we must keep our eyes, Colossians 3, verse 2, on things above and not on earthly things. The things of the earth will drag you down, but when we keep our eyes on the things of heaven and the ways of heaven and Jesus Christ who came, John 14, 9, to reveal the Father to us so that we could have the hope and the faith. Amen? We keep our eyes on those things and we keep our eyes on life. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible also tells us, we are speaking, what can the blood of Jesus do for you? The Bible tells us, it says that the blood of Jesus will bring you peace when you're wrestling with sin and sickness. Amen? Meditating upon the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus will bring the peace unto your life. Hallelujah. This woman, she had the issue of blood. She went to all the doctors. They took all of her money. She wore herself out from doctor to doctor, and yet not one of them could help her. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 22, it says, is there no balm in Gilead? The word balm means healing, and the word Gilead means worship. It means, is there not healing in worship? And I tell you today that when you worship Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. It's as you worship, there will be salvation. There'll be deliverance. There'll be healing in your life. The chains will be broken off and you will be free right now. Even now, worship isn't just singing. Worship is giving worth to God. And as we are giving him worth and we're lifting up his name in this show, right now, chains are falling off people. Hope is rising. People are being set free. Even right now, I feel the presence of God just saying as we're speaking about the resurrection rise up right now as I'm speaking if you couldn't move your arm start to move it if your leg didn't move start to move it right now I'm telling you if you have a blood pressure problem you take your blood pressure after the show I'm telling you in the name of Jesus it's coming down chains are being broken right now off of your life in the name of Jesus hallelujah we know why the Bible says, again, Jeremiah 17, 14, unless Jesus saves, we are not saved. Unless he heals, we are not healed. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, that Jesus was pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity, and by his wounds we're healed. Matthew 8, 17, we are healed by Jesus because he died for our sickness. In all the places, so many times in the Bible, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Jesus came to heal our sickness and set us free from the oppression of the enemy. Amen? The promises of Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, are yes and amen. Book of 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56, his promises from Moses till now never fail. What are his promises? This is why I'm explaining to you, child of God, his promises are to heal us, are to set us free from the attacks and the oppression of the enemy. Amen? Hallelujah. There's no name, Acts 4, verse 12, above the earth, below the earth, or on the earth that saves apart from the name of Jesus. Let's pray together right now, precious people of God. Close your eyes. Open your heart. Look unto the cross of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, O oh God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Israel, Oh God, your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, heaven is thine throne and earth is thy footstool. Lord Jesus, we come before your throne of grace and mercy, not because we are good and righteous, but because of your tender mercy. Oh God, this day, we know that it is your heart's desire to open the spiritual inward eye 
of our heart. Lord Jesus Christ, God, we want to be able to answer with boldness the question that you have asked of us. Who do you say I am? Lord Jesus Christ, right now, hear the heart of your people saying, you are the Christ. You are the Son of God. You are the Messiah. You are the Holy One. You are faithful and true. You are, Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who was slain for the sins of the world. Oh God, this is who you are. You are the healer. You are the Savior. You are Abba Father from up above, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, you are the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. We believe you. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you, Per Ephesians 1, 17 to 19, open the spiritual inward eye of our heart. We want to see your glory. We want to see your power. We know when the spiritual inward eye of our heart is enlightened, all the temporal blessings will come automatically. So Lord Jesus, we come as King David came in Psalm 27, verse 4. He said, one thing I ask, O Lord, that I dwell in your presence forever. God, we're asking to dwell in your presence. We're asking to see your glory. We're asking for your Holy Spirit to dwell within us right now every person who that's their heart's desire fill them with rivers of living water lord jesus christ open their spiritual inward eye oh god lord jesus christ give them the words oh god to express that you are their lord their god and their savior oh god be with them bless them Lord Jesus Christ, and God, as they are your church, the gates of hell shall not prevail. As they are your church, you will build their life upon the rock, the rock of the revelation that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Be with them. Bless them this week. Let them walk in the strength of your glory and your power and your everlasting love, your everlasting arms. Be all around them. Be with them. Bless them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the love of the Father God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship and the unity rest upon each and every person, believing you and listening today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Precious people of God, I thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the encouragement of the calls and emails we get so many from you, saying that hope is coming into your life. It is not from me. It is from the Word of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, the giver and the creator of our hope. We'll see you next week, and the gospel is the power. Make his path straight. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness. Let your rain.